Hi, and welcome to Valheim Tips and Tricks. One of the most relatively challenging biomes in Valheim in the mid-game is the swamp. And that is because in that point of the game, your armor and weapons are still too weak against the high damaging swamp mobs. You also need a lot of stamina to run around this challenging terrain and that is hard to do when you are constantly in a wet debuff. So that's why we've decided to create this video showing tips and tricks that can at least help you guys have a better experience when you first enter the swamp biome. But before that, we would like you guys to know that we appreciate the support that we received on our very first tips and tricks video for Valheim. At the same time, we also realized that more than 90% of the viewers were not yet subscribed to our channel. So, if you like the content that we are creating, please make sure to subscribe to our channel and turn on all notifications so you won't miss our future uploads. By doing this, you are letting us know that you like what we're doing and this will enable us to continue to make quality tips and tricks videos for you. Now, let's get into the Swamp Survival Guide. One of the main reasons why a fearless viking like you would like to venture into the swamp is to find a crypt to mine scrap irons. I just want to clarify that this survival guide is for those who are just progressing after defeating the second boss. Because if you will do swamp exploration in the late game or already geared, that would be a totally different story. At the same time, some of the tips in this video may still apply to your current stage of the game, so just check it out. First, the food. You have to make sure that you have a very good food combination when you are in the swamp. So, I recommend a balanced amount of health and stamina food since you will be doing a lot of running and gunning in this biome. So, at this level, you can have these recommended food. Honey. Cook deer meat, boar jerky, carrot soup, minced meat sauce. These are just some recommendation based on my experience and you can always experiment your own combination like mix and match depending on the available food that you have and your playstyle. Second, Poison Resist Potion One of the most high damaging mobs in the swamp is the Blob, especially its older brother, the Oozer. It's not dangerous because of its burst damage per se, but the poison's damage over time is so deadly. So make sure that you bring Poison Resist with you. Remember that you need to take it before you get poison and not the other way around. Without the poison resist, the poison ticks an average of 3.3 damage per second, and this will last for a good 18 seconds. With the poison resist, it's just around 0.7 to 0.8 damage per tick and only lasts for 6 seconds. The leeches also deals poison damage, so keep popping that poison resist potion like a good viking. Third, the weapons. Buckler shield is a must and non-negotiable. Swamp is the home of the Draugr archers and the skeleton archers and they hurt a lot in your current level. You can also use this to parry attacks and this will be a huge advantage because every successful parry using the buckler shield will give you 2.5 bonus damage multiplier on your next attack. Blobs and skeletons are weak to blunt damage, so bring a mace or a stag breaker with you. The Abomination, the newest addition to the Swamp Mobs, 
is weak to slash damage, so bringing a sword with you is also a good idea. Draugrs, leeches, wraiths, and certlings don't really have a particular damage type weakness, so you can just pretty much use any weapons against them. Spears are also effective against draugrs and wraiths, but not advisable against the abomination. For the certlings, they basically just die on their own. All you need to do is this. And there you go. Not only that, you don't have to deal with them anymore. Now you have an unlimited supply of colds and certain cores. Fourth, optimizing the use of portals. In order for you to have a comfortable and a fast way to drop extra loots and repair your gear when mining iron scraps is to use a portal. So you can just drop the iron scraps in the chest and you can just teleport if your tools or gears already need fixing. Fix your stuff and drop your extra loot in the drop box you have prepared in your base. You can organize that later. And the reason why we placed our portal on top of the crypt is to avoid having it destroyed by the mobs. Because if that happens, well, then you know you have a problem. Now, once you have already mined the crypt and all the scrap irons are already in the chest, don't forget to mark that on your map to be picked up later once you have already mined all the crypts in that swamp biome. Once all the crypts are done, now you can either do it the old viking way and ship it across the ocean and kill some sea serpents along the way or get killed by the serpents along the way or just do the log out, log in exploit. Whichever your choice may be, you do you, and as long as you're having fun doing it, that's all that matters. Fifth, place a campfire in the crypt. Building a campfire does not require a workbench, and the game allows you to build campfires in the crypt. By doing this, you can dry yourself faster and get rid of the wet debuff. You will need all the HP and stamina regen that you can get, especially you will need to deal with strong mobs like Draugrs and the Blobs in that dungeon. With the campfire and shelter, you can get a Comfort 3 inside the crypt. And that can give you 10 minutes of rested bonus, which will help you a lot in terms of HP and stamina region. Sixth, exploring the crypts. In exploring the crypts, always go to one direction. So you have to choose to go always to the right or always go to the left. You can also leave breadcrumbs like leaving unwanted loots as markers while you're exploring. This will make it easier for you to find your way around the dungeon when you have to drop your loot outside the crypt and back again. But if you are playing with someone, just make sure to communicate this strategy with your teammate because they might unintentionally loot the markers that you have left. Seventh, cheesing. If you feel that you are not yet able to take on the druggers and the blobs in the crypt, just to be on the safe side, you can partially mine a portion of the mud pile and shoot through it. This way, you can kill the mobs in that section before safely going in. If there is a body pile, which is a Draugr spawner, you have to destroy that first so that they will stop spawning. You may have to use your bow and arrow in doing this. Take note that the Draugrs are weak to pierce damage and blobs are weak to blunt damage. So, spear or bow for the Draugrs and maze for the blobs. Just be careful with the poison. So, if your gameplay is the brawling type, just make sure to use your shield and don't forget to pop in your poison resist potion. Eighth, how to deal with the abomination. The abomination is weak against slash damage, so make use of your sword or your axe to fight it. The best way to fight it is to stay close and stay underneath it if possible. 
in that stage of the game, you should have a bronze buckler, so you should be able to parry its attacks. You can also dodge roll if you are not confident of your parry timing. Running around and fighting the Abomination in range is the most ridiculous thing to do, since the Abomination is resistant to pierce damage. Maybe this strategy is plausible if you are already a high level, but still not the most efficient way since you will be aggroing all the other mobs around you. Ninth, Use the Root Armor Once you have already defeated an Abomination, you should be able to unlock the Root Armor. When that happens, you shouldn't have to worry about blobs or archer draugers or skeleton archers anymore. The root armor is lighter than the bronze armor as well, so this is perfect for gathering scrap irons in crypts. The root armor set gives you plus 15 bow skill points. The mask offers a poison protection just like the poison resist potion. As you can see, the poison timer doesn't go over 8 seconds and it only deals 1.5 damage. The Harness offers Pierce Damage Protection, so Archer Draugers, Skeleton Archers will not be that scary anymore. But always remember that this armor is for a specific game style. So, if your play is a Brawler or a Tank type, this armor is not for you. You can also mix and match the Root Armor with the other armors if you want to have a higher armor protection. If you want a full guide and a deep dive on the pierce damage reduction for this armor, you can check the link in the description below or you can click on the pop-up notification in this video. 10th, Corpse Run. In case you die at night, don't go running back like a lunatic to retrieve your gear. Tombstones don't despawn nor have a time limit, so your gears and your loots will be there until you can manage to get it back. If no one can accompany you to get your stuff back, sleep the night away since the mob spawns multiply in the night and night spawns will despawn in the morning. The good thing is, there is a no skill drain buff every time you die. This is meant for you to do a corpse run without losing further skill points if in case you die again. So far, these are the most important information that you need to have in mind in order to survive the swamp. This volume will definitely become a lot easier to explore when you are already a high level. But as far as a newly progressed character is concerned, these are vital to your survival. But if you have some recommendations that you think should be added in this noob guide, please let me know in the description below. And that is all for now you guys, and I do hope you find this guide helpful. If you do, please leave a like and smash that subscribe button for fresh tips and tricks for Valheim. You can also leave a comment below for requests of guides and walkthroughs that you want us to cover or any recommendations on how we can make our content better in our future videos. Thank you so much for watching and bye for now you guys.